to a view to your world. Today we are at the Woodridge Public Library. Typically, libraries are quiet, but it's not that way today. Today they're having their grand reopening after renovations were performed to the building. There's a lot of festivities going on here. They've got tours of the building to show off the new features. They've got a barbershop quartet, and they've even got food and refreshments. So we'd like to take you guys along to, to share in the adventure. You know what? You might even see a few familiar faces along the way. Let's go. If I could have your attention, please. Thank you so much for coming today. I'm going to let our library administrator, I should say our esteemed library administrator, get us started. But before she does, this is Susan McNeil Marshall. She's well loved by the staff and the community. She's retiring after 40 years as a librarian, and we're very proud of her, and I'm so pleased that she's here to welcome you to the renovated space. Susan? Thank you. Well, that makes me feel really old. I have to say. <laughs> Um, I'd like to welcome all of you who have come today and who have taken the tours, and if you haven't gone on the tour yet, please do so. Um, I've heard nothing but good comments from people <coughs> who are really pleased at how it looks upstairs and downstairs. First of all, I'd like to recognize the library board members, and I'm going to just have them raise their hand. We're trying to be brief with our comments. Uh, Jay Teedy is our president, Chris Tripp. Judy Bloom. Can you just wave? Chris Tripp is back here. Judy Bloom is here. I'm not sure where Jay is. Um, Jane Whiteside is here somewhere. Okay. But anyway, if you see a board member and you know them, Jay Teedy's back here. Please give your comments to them. They would love to hear what you think. Um, I also am pleased to introduce Mayor Cunningham. She's here today representing the village of Woodridge. Um, Mike Krusek was also here today, but he had to go. Um, and we're going to have a couple other board members, I believe, come through this afternoon. Our architect and Port, one of the two, uh, the three architects we worked with from Product Architecture plus Design, is here in the building somewhere. So if you um, if you're interested in meeting him, I can introduce you to him. Um, I also I just want to say next year is our 50th year of being in existence in 2017. The first two years we were in the basement of an old house that housed Village Hall and the police station. It was on the other side of 75th Street. Then we were in two more houses um, that were also on the other side of 75th Street until in 1977 we broke ground here, in which we were the first building in town center. The first library director of this library is Lori Kagan. She's also here. Lori, can you just raise your hand? So that first building, that main building that was the first building in town center is what is, that's the east side of the building. So we have built on that. We built this part of the building in 1997 and today you are here to celebrate the sixth new look for the library. The sixth in our 50 years. So, uh, you know, I would just encourage you to look around and think about, so I have people here all the time who tell me that they used to go to those old, the old houses over there on south of 75th Street, and this is such a change for them. All the changes that have been made to the library over the whole 50 year period have been because the village has changed, needs of the community have changed, population has grown, so everything you see in all of these iterations of the building as a result of the library and the library boards over the years responding to the needs of the village. I think this is a very nice thing to think about when you think about this building. It does have a board that supervises everything in it. The staff does a very nice job of working it, but it really is board decisions that make things like a renovation possible. The renovations that you see today are a direct result of long-range plans that we did that included focus groups with the public, 
a community survey where we had 600 comments come in and then just the ongoing usage and statistics and comments that we hear from the public all the time about what they would like to see. So I am done with my comments. Thank you again for being here. Enjoy the music and uh, do look around in the building. Thank you. So thank you very much for coming today. We do have a barbershop quartet. So if you can't stay for the entire uh, music, that's fine. If you'd like to do a tour now, that's fine too. Otherwise, we'll pick tours back up at 3 o'clock because I'm very happy to announce Bermada de Aria to perform for you. This is just the kind of day that you dream about when you open up your mouth. A song of sound. Zippity doo da, zippity yay. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine head my way. Zippity doo da, zippity yay. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's actual. Oh boy, everything is satisfactual. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. When you open up your mouth, the sun pops out. It's the truth, it's the truth, it's actual. It's actual. Everything is satisfactual. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling. Wonderful day. Zip, zip, You got four seconds. Do you know who this is? You should. It's your neighbor. No, wrong neighbor. Someone wants to join in. We're doing a tour of the Dalton Tea. And uh, Chris Keith is our director of computer classes, technology training here. Well, welcome. Um, I recognize, I think, some of you have taken classes here in the library in the past. And you probably remember you were downstairs in the basement. Yes. Well, we brought that computer training lab up to the main floor now. Um, obviously, it's going to be much easier to access, so you won't have to be going down the stairs to the elevator. We're hoping that uh, people will kind of be curious to find out what's going on in this room, and it might encourage people to consider taking a computer class. So I'm really pleased to be able to bring that training lab up here for both access and visibility. Uh, the same equipment that we had downstairs has been brought up, so we're reusing everything that we had before. Uh, we did install a, you know, a cutting-edge new screen, so we hope it'll be nice bright and crisp and uh, we've uh, you know we're going to be offering pretty much the classes that you've been accustomed to uh, in the past again up here and of course we'll always be adding new ones as we go on and what's also nice about this lab is that uh, we have uh, village units like the village hall oftentimes using our facilities to train their own staff so they'll be using this lab area as well so we're able to work with other village units uh, to help them provide some facilities that they can use for their own training. So uh, we expect that this room will be used and in use quite often, whether it's for us and you or for other members of the community. So um, we're really pleased how this looks. Um, I think it's nice, neat, and clean, uh, plenty of space, and uh, so we're hoping that uh, you'll continue to take classes and uh, be uh, really kind of interested and pass the word along uh, that this is your new training lab. So I uh, really think it's going to be nice. Thank you. 
So we just entered what was the original building that was built in 1979. The part that we were in before, that's an addition that happened in 1997. So this space has a lot of improvements that we had to make because it was built in 1979. And one of the things that you'll see throughout is a lot of new places for people to plug in to their laptops or charge their phone. We retrofit some of the furniture and we added outlets throughout. The study rooms we added, we had three, but now you see there's five here. There's three more beyond this elevator shaft. Because what we heard is that people want to meet here. Uh, small business people trying to get something up and running. They want to meet people, clients, or potential work. A lot of tutoring groups, uh, high school kids to study. So the study rooms, I think we see get used. Um, for example, last year, 4,000 individual uses of the room. You know, so people come and go every day. It's, it's a major part of what we do. Well, I have a story about Ireland. Miss Sainted Miller was Irish. My father was German. Anytime I did anything right, I was Irish. Anytime I did anything wrong, I was German. I was German a lot of that. Anyhow, this story is about an Irish constable. And he's out on traffic patrol one time, and he observes this very sleek, powerful car come whipping down to the stop sign, swing right through it, and head off the road. So he starts his car, and he chases after him, pulls him over. And he walks up to the car and he says, Sir, can I see your license and registration? And the guy behind the wheel, very uppity attorney from London, says, Why do you want to do that? He says, Sir, you went through the stop sign back there without stopping. He says, Yeah, but I slowed down. And the officer says, Well, sir, the law says you must come to a stop. Now, may I please have your driver's license and registration? And the fellow says, well, I don't see the difference. If I slowed down, there was nobody coming. That's just as good as a stop. And the officer says, no, sir, the law is very clear. You must come to a stop. And the attorney thinks for a minute. He says, if you can explain to me the difference between stopping and slowing down, he says, then I'll give you my license and I'll be happy to pay the ticket. But if you can't, we'll just drop it, all right? Well, the constable thinks about it for a minute. He says, fine, sir, would you please step out of the car? The guy steps out, and the constable pulls his baton, which in the United States is called a billy club. Yes. But over there, it's called a baton. And he starts beating this guy on the head. Bam, bam, bam. He says, now, sir, would you like me to stop, or do you just want me to slow down? <laughs> Our computer help desk, we now have a dedicated desk to computer services. So when you come into the library, we always have some available, someone available, and that's an additional staff time for this. I am one of the four computer assistants um, in charge of this desk. Uh, here we are here to assist people in the computer room. We help them with the scanning, printouts, any help that they need with their um, their search. Um, there's also the fax station right next towards the end. Also here we'll, in this desk we will be signing up for classes. So also that's where now we have the phone where patrons will be able to come in personally or call us to reserve a spot in, in the classes. Along with us pulling together all the computers. So if you step over here, we have a commons, a computer commons. We actually added computers way back. We called it the internet search rooms, but we've kind of gone beyond that, and we've added. So we went from 25 computers, now we have 32 computers. Uh, these are open to Woodridge residents, or if you're a visitor, you can get a visitor pass. This wall is an office center. You can do printing, scanning, faxing. The fax machine is an outside vendor who has it here. And so you can use your credit card. And currently it's set up for you to fax out. And so you bring your credit card and you pick up the phone and you get directions and you work with that and you issue it. As far as receiving faxes, I think that we are not set for that. We haven't. Um, we want to get a handle on the logistics uh, so that someone else doesn't intercept your fax because mm -hmm. it's coming to this public space and so if you're having something sent. 
One of the things we're trying to educate everyone about is in some cases you've evolved to where you can send and receive things as PDF files attached to emails. Mm -hmm. And so if that's your goal, we can help you scan, attach your document to an email and send it in. And that alleviates any cost to you. And the same thing, if you receive a PDF document attached to an email, we can help you locate, open that. Yeah. Thanks. That's a good question. The nonfiction, we added shelving. We closed up a wall so we can add shelving. We want to keep our good, rich print collection. And at the end of the aisle, we gathered all the uh, study carols, and we've lined them up as a quiet study zone, and we added electricity at each station. So if you have a laptop and you want your own private place, place to study, that's a good part. Yeah. It's, well, you can't see it because it's really quiet. It's very quiet. So the magazines and newspapers we pulled out of a dark corner, and it's here with all the natural light. We have hundreds that we subscribe to, and we keep the most current one on top, and then one to two years underneath. And you can check these older ones out. We have our sign out. You can download magazines for free, and you keep those issues. And it just requires you to sign up for a Zinio account using your library card. And then let's say you like Popular Science, then every month you get an email from Popular Science, and you click on it, and there's the digital magazine for you. And that's free. Would that be the same as Consumer Reports? Consumer Reports acts differently. They're a database. But you can connect through the library's website, yeah. and you get the same privileges as someone who has a personal subscription. So Consumer Reports is available for free for uh, library card holders. So when we negotiate with uh, Consumer Reports or Zinio magazines, they charge us based on our library cards. And so that's why we request that you get a library card, and then you have to use part of your library card as like your code to get access to all the material. And if you don't have a library card, the circulation desk at the front will help you get one. Are we going to pick some blocks? for connecting your laptop or if you need to charge a device. So these are good tables. We didn't want to get rid of those, so they retrofit them with the electricity. The big expense was getting the electricity to here. So they had to drill through the cement floor and bring the wires over. In 1979, we didn't really have the concept that everyone would be carrying a device that they wanted to plug in. So that's the big change from that. The reference desk behind you looks similar to what was here before. It's had some upgrades for the staff. It's an important place because this staff helps you figure everything out. So if you want to figure out how do I download that audio book or an e-book, how do I stream a movie, you can bring your device to them. They'll help you at that level, you know, get everything lined up, use your library card to get access to all the resources, and all the traditional things, helping you place a hold on a book or finding one from somewhere else, getting things sent here. Uh, I guess they're the detectives, and they'll help <laughs> you get everything done. Yeah. So I'm excited. The uh, fiction collection is condensed consolidated here along this wall. And so it looks like a really big collection. It's the fiction, large print, mystery, science fiction, westerns, everything's in here. Um, we have career, junior high, and textbooks here. If you're in high school, we keep those in the back. The high school textbooks turn over a lot, so we keep them by the teen librarian's desk. And we have our English as a Second Language uh, resources. This is new shelving for the paperback bestsellers. We're trying to make it more like a All high schools that serve Woodbridge, the downshore uh, high schools, issue the kids Chromebooks now. And much of the homework that they're doing, they never print out on the yes. paper. They just deliver directly as a digital file to the teacher. So all the kids have a Chromebook. If they don't have theirs with them, or you don't go to downshore school, you can check out a Chromebook at the front desk for your use while you're here in the library. 
You can plug it in. You can also charge your phone or your tablet. So this is a laptop counter. This is a teen lounge and a study counter at the back. These tables, I know you're like, those are just round tables. They are not. Those are collaboration tables. One of the things that's important to educators today is that the kids not just learn it on their own, but they work it well as a team. It's one of those things you see in the workplace. You need to work with others well. And so if you go to any high school or junior high library, they're going to have a setup similar to this. And the idea is the kids should meet, work as a group, get their project done. And what's more fun, probably, at the end is the new gaming center. That's a 55-inch display screen, and it has three different gaming systems, PlayStation, Wii, and Xbox. And it seems like fun and games now, but when they go to college and they get their degree in gaming, and then they're software writers and creators, then it becomes much more serious. Uh, locally, we have Elmhurst College. They have a gaming uh, degree there. And they do have nights when they turn their whole library over to gaming uh, tournaments and workshops. So this is our small version of it. And kids who are part of the after hours goats or the uh, teen group that we have here, they're going to use it and we'll have some other programs. And this is open to all teenagers? So this is open to all teenagers. If the teenagers are in school, then adults are welcome to come and hang out. And I have to say, we have some retirees who settle in here with the newspaper every morning and enjoy it. Um, or if you're studying here during the day or running errands and you stop in, you're more than welcome to do that. We want it to be reserved for the teens after hours because it's more likely teens will want to hang out. Other questions about this teen space? Yes, sir. So how do you get to like access the game room? Bring your library card with you and at the reference desk say I would like a game and talk to them about it and they'll check a game out to you while you're here and you bring it over and you play it and when you're done you turn it back. Sound good? Yeah. How long did you have? programs, really we don't use the space too well. So now we can divide it into two smaller rooms and get more use out of it. Also an upgrade to this space is we have this uh, TV set up so that uh, if you need a, to do a webinar, small businesses or local people have to do some sort of a conference, we're envisioning that they can do that here. Uh, also you can do small presentation. So if you're a Woodridge resident and you use the calendar online to sign up for the meeting room, you're entitled to use it once a month. Uh, you could request this space and you can have the setup just like that for your use while you're here. When we do have a big program, we'll, close, we'll completely open that wall so that we have all the space going across. But we made a lot of new space in Children's by taking the story time room and moving it into this half. And we have Paula Leonard, she's our early literacy specialist on the children's staff. She's I like entitled. that title. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now you're on camera. Just so you know. <laughs> Could you explain about the wall? Not as well as you might. Okay. So this, this half wall here, um, there are more pieces to it in this closet, so we can completely divide the two rooms, so we can do two programs at once. Oh, thank you. Or we can take the rest of this wall and put it into the closet so we have one big room. On this side is uh, where we do our children's story time programs. 
So the kids sit here and we do our, our programs. We have some programs with parents and children present at the same time. I put our, our screen down so you can see that we do have the ability to hook our projector up to a computer. We will do a, um, what we call it the brown bag movie. When the kids are off of school, we'll show a movie and they can bring their lunch with and eat. And this is really cool. Don't worry. Yeah, Steffi, you got to step all the way in. Give us a minute here and let us. Uh... So that's our puppet theater. Um, we still have to add the curtains to it. Yeah. We usually do um, a couple of programs that have a puppet component in the summer and then again at the holidays. So, and then that big round door closes. Miss Sherry calls it our puppet hole. Um, and also in that room back there, we have lots and lots of storage. So. That's pretty so much the children's is, program room in a nutshell. Any questions? Ask me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you have on your chairs for the parents, right? With the kids can use these chairs. The parents, um, when we when I do like it's called a baby lap sit, so we have parents, grandparents, and kids. So usually a parent with a kid, a child in their lap. If we do have grandparents, I always offer them a regular chair. Oh, good. <laughs> And also, if it's a large children's program where it's more than um, the small group that they would have in story time, then we would open the wall all the way and the children can use the whole big space. So that's the other advantage, that when they have something big, they can accommodate everybody. Or like, when you guys have something big, we open it up and you have the whole space. That's right. So I think it's a win-win. The other thing that the puppet theater will be used for is uh, in the summer we have a reader's theater group. The kids actually do performances based on scripts. They make their own puppets and they can do something for a costume. And uh, I think we're adding to that this summer. We're, we're going to have imagination theater, and that'll be for the younger kids to do something. So we're excited about putting the puppet theater to use. Mm -hmm. All right, let's step out to the main uh, part of the library. Wow. And if you were here as a child, you might say, I don't recognize this space. Yes. That's right. So. so this is going to be a good place to study. If you'd like to, you know, meet with someone, you could have a tutoring here or maybe just someone in your class. This is, we're thinking, the parents who are waiting for the kids in story time. This is a good place for them to hang out and they can visually check the windows. This area here to my right had been closed in as the story time room, and it was completely demolished. And now from the front of the library through the back, it's all open, and we have all that new floor space. So what we've created is a couple of zones. Along the window, we have early literacy set up, and there are activities laid out for parents or adults who want to do early literacy activities numbers and letters and colors, all the things you need to do. And then when we move down here, this is a discovery activity center that's more kid focused. They're doing their own work. There's a discovery table, there's a light table, there's a train table. They flip over the on the other side. This is something to do. There's little baskets that go along with some of those. And then here under the window on the bottom shelf, you see the activities that parents can use with the kids themselves. The e-readers are wrapping around the windows, and this centerpiece here are picture books, you know, the stories you read to the kids. So what questions do you have? About? <laughs> Is it? Well, here we have an actual baby coming. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so oh, oh, yeah. yeah. oh, oh, he, he was just enjoying you the You want to put him on table. television. Oh. So we do age 0 through 12 on this floor. We're not kidding. Babies, 0 through 12. So we have a program called Baby Lapsit, and the parents come and the babies sit on their lap and the librarians leave them on this place. We actually are devoting some workshops to helping parents know how to interact with kids to get the most out of learning. And so we invite, we work with the local schools to try to identify families. Sometimes it's English as a second language, or sometimes it's just a young family, and they need some coaching to work well with their child. And so we're offering some workshops. So you have to bear.
barrel ceiling there in the middle, and then you step over here, and it's a little quieter, which is good. We're envisioning that this is more of the center for the little bit older kids, you know, maybe 8 or 12. This is a good study place for them. They have access to the book catalog here, but these are all the non-fiction. It's the novels, the series books, the non-fiction, the facts that they need. So the older kids' collection of books is all on this side. Then, we're, we're embracing some of the library trends, like being a place where kids create. So we're trying to incorporate so just don't come to get material things in the library, but you probably can imagine make something. So this is an example of that. We, we put a question up earlier, and it looks like the kids have been filling in their uh, answers. So that's fun. Beyond this board, we have the computer center. We're going to have 10, and they're all new, so we're right up to date. Many of the kids uh, in District 68 and 66 have accounts with their teacher in their class, and so it's a, it's a unit, and they submit their work, and they get their assignments all on the computer. But we still have 10 to 20 percent of kids don't have equipment at home, don't have Wi-Fi, so we're a good source for them to come into the network. This is limited to kids um, through age 11, and when they're older than that, then they can use the computers downstairs. So, if they're very little kids, we ask the parent to sit with them. At home. So, uh, questions? It's it's great. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 And I like the fact that you can have a different age group. So like one song five and one that's nine. So yeah. we can all To tell you the truth, I see over the comfortable area, I see parents come who need to get some work done. And they'll plug in with their laptop because now we have charging stations at the bottom of all the chairs. And near them, the younger kids will play and the staff downstairs and tech services and circle talk with me. Do you like that? All right. If now we'll get to the lobby drop down. And this is called Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which was written by Elton John and made famous in the line. There's a calm surrender to the rush of day When the heat of the rolling world can be turned away An enchanted evening and it sees me through It's enough for this restless warrior just to be with you And can, can you feel the love of tonight, tonight? It is where we are. It's enough for this wide-eyed wanderer that we got this far. And can you feel the love tonight, tonight, how it's laid to rest? It's enough to make kings and Vagabonds believe the very best. There's a time for everyone if they only learn that the twisting kaleidoscope moves us all in turn. There's a rhyme and reason to the wild outdoors When the heart of this star-crossed voyager beats in time with yours And can, can you feel the love of tonight, tonight? It is where we are It's enough for this wide-eyed wanderer
it's laid to rest. It's enough to make kings and vagabonds believe the very best. It's enough to make kings and vagabonds believe You got four seconds. Do you know who this is? <laughs> I recently had the honor of being named Citizen of the Year for Woodridge for 2015, and someone nominated me because I am very active here at the library. Uh, besides working the book sale, I'm president of Friends of the Library, and we're always looking for new members, so please come on in, and we'll be happy to set you up with that. You should know your neighbor. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. So how are you? Oh, okay. Okay. We used to be technical services. We've changed our name to collection services. Mm -hmm. People were thinking that we were the IT department, and we're not. <laughs> okay. So with collection services, it encompasses more of what we do here. Okay. And basically what we do back here is we are the beginning and ending of all the items that the library has. Um, the librarians choose books that they want to add to the collection. They create lists. They send them back to us. What we do is we compile the lists and send them off to our vendors. Once um, they come back here, we receive them, make sure that we got everything that we order. They come to me, I catalog them, I assign them a, a call number, and I send it off to one of my three part-time clerks who okay. do the actual processing of typing up the spine labels, putting the plastic covers on the books, uh, taping the spines, and then they enter them on the computer with the barcode and they enter all the information so that when you check out an item, it knows how long it checks out for three weeks or it's a DVD, it checks out for one week. Um, it knows that by what we enter in the computer. Um, Tess does most of the book processing. Patsy does a lot of most of the AV materials, which is the DVDs, the Blu-rays, the books on CD. Cindy is our acquisitions clerk. I'm sneaking up from behind. <laughs> <laughs> she is our acquisitions clerk. She's the one who does all the ordering for all the our materials, both books and AV. Um, we also manage all the magazine subscriptions back here. We have roughly 325 subscriptions that we make sure that we are getting and are all um, current and everything, so mm -hmm. we take care of that. Um, we receive roughly about a thousand items, a thousand books a month. We receive roughly about 260 AV items a month. And like I said, the magazine subscriptions, we have 325 subscriptions. Um, then once the books are past their prime, they are circulating, they're falling apart, or they're out of date, mm -hmm. they come back to us and we withdraw the items. So, and then after we withdraw them, they go out for the book sales then. Good book sales. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you would like yes. it. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, we're at the beginning and the end of the books that come through the library. Sorry. Do you want to see uh, circulation? All right, so you guys are in the circulation department, the workroom of the circulation department. You know us up front, right? Yes, mm -hmm. um, where we check out your material. If you bring it back to us, we'll, we'll check it back in there. But back here is where we do most of our work. So um, anything that you return gets dropped in the book drops over here. Yeah. You want to see that? Mm -hmm. Back in here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. That's fine. Yes. Right. Gotcha. So that's our book return room, and there's an outside return here right. on the wall. Mm -hmm. So we take the stuff that you return and put them on these carts, and from here we check them in. Oh. At 
one of our workstations. Uh, we check in, we check out about 600,000, 600, between 600 and 650,000 items a year. So all of that comes back, so we have to check that all in too, right? Um, we send out about 4,500 items a month to other libraries, mm -hmm. just in our, in our SWAN consortium. SWAN is our computer, mm -hmm. shared computer database. So, you know, there's 77 libraries and we all share our material. So we send out about 4,500 and we request about 4,500 every month. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do here. We process everything that comes in for you, trap your holds, put it on the hold shelf, um, and then you come in and pick them up, right? We notify you. A lot of that stuff is done by our system headquarters. The notifications go out from our system headquarters in Burr Ridge. Um, what else can I tell you? So also, we do library cards. We maintain the patron database. We answer the phones back here. We do pretty much everything. So you're manually sending them out, checking them in? Yep. You're busy all day. Aren't We're you? busy all day. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so there's 77 libraries? There are 77 libraries in Swan. We are adding two more. Um, in March, we are adding Lansing Public Library, and in May, we're adding Franklin Park Library. So we'll have 79. And that's the shared database that you guys can look mm -hmm. to see what you want and request the material. Mm -hmm. um, and, and pretty much all the libraries share very, very well. Yeah. You know. How do those materials get between the libraries? Is, is there a person who delivers them? We have a delivery company. Right. We, yeah. Okay. Wow. We used to do the, all the delivery through our system headquarters in Burr Ridge. We had people there and trucks there that sorted all the material and sent mm -hmm. them out every day on the trucks. We contract now with a company called CCS, mm -hmm. and so I can't remember where they're located in right now, but they take care of all of our delivery. Through, and we have different hubs in our, in our system, so Rails is the name of our system, the big system, and that's the whole top of the half, top half of the state. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and there are trucks that go all over the state every day delivering stuff. So we just have one small portion, just our Burr Ridge mm -hmm. hub, they call it, is just a small portion of the delivery system in the state of Illinois. And I have to say, the state of Illinois has a great delivery system. Because you guys know, when you request things, if it's not in Swan, it still gets to you pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, so we have a good system in Illinois, really do. Yeah, that's how it's all trucks. Trucks. <laughs> yep. Yep. What can I? Any questions? No, that's just for suburban um, right? Chicago has their own. Okay. They have their own system. They have their own delivery. Everything's Chicago is all separate. Yeah. Okay. Now let me ask you this. You know how you get the free museum passes? Yep. Is that a part of Chicago? No. We have the free the museum adventure program is um, suburban museums. Oh, okay. Chicago has their own museum program okay. at the public library, but it's only for the Chicago museums and only for Chicago residents. Oh, okay. it also is separate. It oh. is separate, yeah. Okay, but we can get them for anything that's suburban. What are we? We have like 35 museums, I think, in the in the program. Okay. Um, the zoo, the Brookfield Zoo, the big ones are that, and Cantini Park, and the Children's Museum in Oak Lawn. In Oak Lawn? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's suburban. Naperville yeah. has the the Naper Settlement. That's part the of the program. Oh, that museum pulled out. They, they used to be part of it and they pulled out. It's costly for the museums to do this. Oh, you know? okay. okay. It is. Um, but we're very thankful for what we have, too. Yeah. Right? So, Oak Lawn is the Children's Museum Oak Lawn. Is yep, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a brochure out front of the museum program. Oh, I, have a I can get that for you. Okay. Yeah.
Right. So there's a lot of sharing going on mm -hmm. in Illinois, and, and we have a, you guys be thankful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have we a are. great, great system. Yes. Yeah, we really do. And I'm, and Woodridge, I'm telling you, Woodridge is wonderful. The people of Woodridge use this library and use it a lot. We have 70% of the population with library cards. Mm -hmm which is great and and you guys use the library mm -hmm. if if we're circulating 600,000 items a year you guys are using the library and so we appreciate that yeah. we really do and very nice people here too. oh good i'm yeah. glad you think Friendly. so yeah. oh, Friendly. good we're from Ana Diaria, and we're going to leave you with this last song which uh, especially uh, some of the turbulent times that are happening out there we want to say god bless the usa If tomorrow all the things were gone, I've worked for all my life. And I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I'd thank my lucky stars to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. I won't forget the man who died, who gave that right to me, and I'll gladly stand up next to you, next to you and defend her still today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this land, God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to L.A., well, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say, an American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me, and I'll gladly stand up next to, next to you, and defend her still today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this land, God bless the USA. If you didn't have a, didn't like it, then think of us as the Backstreet Boys. Okay. <laughs> have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much. So if you would like to continue with touring, you are more than welcome to explore the building on your own. Or if you hover around the lobby, I'll assign you a tour person. There's three tours. There's the adult and teen tour and the children's tour, but not to be missed. Books behind the scenes, and that takes you through tech services and circulation. Thank you so much for coming today. We imagine that this is now a destination place, that as an activity, you can go to the library with the family. I cried, bye, 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 love, bye, 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 happiness, hello, oh, hello, loneliness, think I'm gonna cry, bye, 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 love, bye, 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 sweet caress, hello, oh, hello, emptiness, feel like I'm gonna die, bye, bye, my love, bye, 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 my love, bye, 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 my love.